Would you like to play City Skylines without running out of money? Are you frustrated because your cities get choked with traffic? Hi, I'm Lee, and in this episode of More Money, Less Traffic, I'll show you how to expand your city and your budget without going broke or taking a course in accounting. The financial end of City Skylines often gets overlooked thanks to unlimited money, so I wanted to show how easy this part of the game can be, even for people who hate math. The budget management techniques I'm going to show you here are very simple. For those who have already enjoyed and conquered the financial challenges of the game, I think you may find discoveries I had in making this tutorial rather surprising. Along with learning how to manage our city's finances, the other goal we'll accomplish here will be to decide which new city services to build while more than tripling our population. By the way, if you enjoy my videos, please be sure to like, share, and of course, subscribe and click the notification bell. Now we have a huge amount of money left over from starting our city in part two, and we're going to keep following the lean construction methodology we learned there to expand here in part three. We'll also expand our city according to the city plan I introduced in part one. that stretches out for an entire square mile centered on the intersection of Main Avenue and Broadway right here. Even though we built very little infrastructure to get our city up to 380 in population, we still only half used much of what we built. For example, we built water pipes along Broadway, 7th Street, and Water Street, but we only fully utilized one side of the pipe. Let's take advantage of that infrastructure now. We'll extend our numbered streets one block north of Broadway, which will allow us to build Taylor Street. Next, let's extend 6th and 7th Street south and extend Water Street to the east. Then we'll extend 9th, 10th, and 11th Streets one block north of Water Street and extend Smith Street. Finally, we'll extend Meridian Avenue one block north of Broadway in our industrial area. Oh, and let's upgrade this section of Main Avenue to a paved road too. Give me a second to set the street names and stop signs. These new roads are all the infrastructure we need to add right now. There's no need for power lines since we already have electricity from adjacent zones across our entire grid. And our existing water pipes already reach everywhere except this little corner at Main Avenue and Taylor Street, which we'll just leave unzoned for now. Let's fill in these new blocks with zoning, starting with commercial along the rest of Main Avenue and Broadway here. Residential inside our blocks everywhere west of 4th Street. And since all these new sims will need more than just commercial jobs, we'll add a little more industrial right here at Broadway and Market Street. Now let's talk about city services. We have more than enough cash in the bank to build one garbage facility, one elementary school, and one medical clinic. All we have to do is add up the build cost for each and compare it to the white number down here. If our build cost for anything we want to build is smaller than that bank balance, then we can afford to build it. But let's not forget the upkeep cost. Sometimes we can afford to build something, but we lose our shirt on maintaining it. How do we avoid that? Well, each building also tells its weekly upkeep cost. It sort of seems strange to pay for big things like this weekly, but we don't need any fancy math to figure out what we can afford, because our income is measured weekly too. So all we have to do is add the upkeep costs together for what we want to build and compare it to our green weekly income number down here on the bottom. If our upkeep costs are lower than that income number, then we can afford to maintain what we intend to build. That's fairly simple, right? It's even easier when we're only building one thing at a time. In fact, feel free to do that if it helps you keep things straight. Just make sure you wait seven game days before you build the next building. Now let's figure out which of these new services we need to build right now. Once our city reached its first milestone at 380 in population, our sims began generating garbage. Ew. And if we don't collect it, it just piles up and causes ground pollution all over our city. Ground pollution from uncollected garbage near our water tower would contaminate our water source and our entire water system, causing a lot of sick sims. Poison water or not though, our sims will eventually move out if we don't do something about their garbage. So, where do we put it? Our first option is a landfill site, which sends out garbage trucks that collect the garbage and dump it into a lovely hill of ground pollution that nobody wants to live next to and never goes away on its own. A way better option is the incineration plant, which pollutes just as much as a landfill site, but actually gets rid of the garbage for good while generating a modest amount of electricity. The problem is, we're more than 6,000 sims short to build one this early in the game. Since we have the Green Cities DLC, we can also build a recycling center. The recycling center will pick up and eliminate all of our garbage just like the incineration plant, except it uses more electricity and water, while providing raw materials that can supply our city's industry. 
To be clear, this is unlike in real life where some types of garbage just always end up in a landfill. In City Skylines, it turns out everything can be recycled. Even though recycling centers cost four times as much to build as a landfill site, that seems like a small price to pay for a huge reduction in pollution and disposing of all of our garbage for good right at the beginning. So let's build one right over here on Meridian Avenue on the edge of our plan area. Now if you don't have green cities, you'll have to build a landfill site. I suggest extending a street off of the end of Meridian Avenue here rather than putting it right on Broadway. Even though a landfill only costs 800 credits to move, it has to be emptied beforehand which takes quite a while if it's full. Landfill sites don't need electricity or water, just a road connection. So place them far enough away from your main roads and anywhere else you'd like to build anytime soon so they don't get in the way, since they'll likely be there for a long time. So now that we've handled our most critical new city service, let's talk about education. The education level of our Sims dictates everything about how much we can grow our city's economy. It especially affects how much we can increase land value and in turn tax revenues across our city. Education even affects the expenses for basic services. I'll cover this much, much more in part four, but right now let me just say that a more educated sim is a more profitable sim. Therefore, let's build an elementary school right away. It may not be critical to the basic function of our city, but it is a low cost investment that pays off huge later in so many ways. When we move our new school to different locations, notice how the roads around it turn green in the education info view. Residential zones along these green roads gain more desirability from the elementary school. So to maximize its benefits, let's place it as close to the center of a residential neighborhood as we can. The last new service we can add right now is healthcare. In my original More Money Less Traffic series, I recommended holding off on building a medical clinic until we had our first sim in need of an ambulance. In preparing this tutorial though, I've discovered there really is no reason not to build one right away. I'll explain more in a bit, but right now just trust me and go with it. Like elementary schools, medical clinics show where they'll have the most benefit by turning the streets green around them on the healthcare info view. Let's put this right here on Broadway, near our city center, where it should cover everything fairly well. I know we've already built everything, but let's total our upkeep costs to make sure our income will stay positive. Our recycling center costs 240 credits per week, the elementary school 160 credits, and the medical clinic 400. That adds up to 800 credits per week, which is way below our income level. Let's start the clock, slowly, so we can check out our info views and update our budget. Our city is too small to use the full capacity of most services, so we can still save a few credits here and there without hurting anything. First, let's look at healthcare. We have way more capacity than we need, so let's drop the budget down to 50%, for now anyway. Notice how the green area around our medical clinic has shrunk. That's what happens with service buildings when we lower their budget. Now education. Again, we have way more capacity than we need. So let's drop the education budget down to 65% to save a few credits each week. Can we save a little bit on garbage? Maybe. Let's drop the budget to 75%. Uh, maybe 80. In part one, we reduce our electricity and water budgets to 50%. The temperature in our city is pretty comfortable right now, but our city is doubling in size and our sims will need more electricity to stay warm when it drops. So let's pump the electricity budget up to 75%. Our water supply looks fine for now, so we'll leave the water budget at 50%. One last thing. A commenter on part two, Alphanord, asked, why didn't I cut the road budget? Even though my years of experience playing SimCity says, no, don't do it, it'll be a disaster. Let's try it and see what happens. The clock is running, but nothing seems to have happened. Huh, why is this? Well, first off, the maintenance costs for roads and city skylines are fixed, so changing this slider won't affect how much we pay for them each week. And better yet, our roads won't deteriorate due to underfunding like in SimCity. In fact, many of you probably noticed that you don't even have the road budget slider. That's because you're missing the Snowfall DLC. Snowfall includes road maintenance buildings that have upkeep costs, so the road budget slider only affects funding for these buildings, which aren't even unlocked at this point in the game. Now that that's cleared up, Let's speed things up and watch the Sims move in. We'll add industry and tweak our budget as needed until we reach a population of 750 Sims. It looks like we're low on water. Let's pump the budget up to 60%. There we are! 
750 sims with 35,000 credits in the bank. Our income has also expanded thanks to additional population, and we hardly noticed that extra 496 credits we're spending each week on new services. Let's come back to that. We've also unlocked industry specializations in forestry and agriculture, districts, and a few basic city service policies. Very importantly though, we've unlocked two new city services, fire and police. This means that buildings in our city can experience crime and catch fire. And just like roads, water, electricity, garbage collection, and healthcare, if we don't provide them in time, our sims will pack up or close shop and leave, especially if their house burns down. So do we need to build a firehouse or a police station right away? We could wait for our first fire or our first crime to save money, which is what I recommended in the original More Money Less Traffic series. But again, like with the medical clinic, I've decided to reverse that. I did several tests with our city. Several. Very boring. Very repetitive tests. To determine if it really saved us money to hold off on building a medical clinic, firehouse, or police station until the last possible moment. I endeavored to test as methodically as possible, keeping everything the same between tests as much as I could, since the game can progress somewhat randomly. I also ran multiple tests with and without each of these services and at different budget levels. I could only find a negligible net savings from not building any of these, and almost no savings for cutting their budgets. So building a medical clinic, firehouse, or police station right away won't really cost us in savings or income. So we might as well enjoy the benefits as soon as possible. Now, of course, the question is, how could this be? We're skipping ahead a little bit, but city services increase land value, which increases tax revenues enough to cover upkeep costs. In fact, I'd say that these three services pay for themselves much earlier than I ever realized, and without any of the drawbacks we'll talk more about in part four, where we'll really dig into how land value works. So very briefly, let's see if we can afford to build a firehouse and a police station. The build cost for each is 12,000 credits for a total of 24,000, which we can definitely afford. And the upkeep cost for a firehouse is 560 credits, while the cost for a police station is 480, for a total of 1,060 credits per week. This does eat up most of our income, but these services also increase tax revenues enough to offset that. Let's make sure we build these where they'll cover as much of our city as possible. Again, pay attention to where the roads turn green. Our fire safety info view shows that our industrial area has the highest hazard, so let's build these across from each other right here on Broadway at 6th Street so they'll cover it well. Now we'll expand our city out to Park Avenue and build up the southern half of our city center. We'll start by extending Water Street one block west to 12th Street, and then 6th, 7th, and 9th Streets south one block so we can build Mill Street. Let's also extend 6th Street one block north from Taylor Street and build a block of Church Street here too. Now let's go over to Main Avenue to set the angle for Park Avenue. Remember that 3 to 5 ratio from Part 1? Let's start 6 units north of Taylor Street and extend a street 5 units east and then 3 units north. This gives us that 59 degree angle we're looking for. We'll demolish this street in a second, but for now this will provide a guide for us to build east to west at exactly the angle we want. Now switch to the two lane road tool so we can extend Park Avenue out to each numbered street you will cross. Until we get to 12th Street. Now switch back to the two lane gravel road tool to extend 12th, 11th, and 10th streets to Park Avenue. At 10th Street, we'll build a road at a sharp angle to Park Avenue to get the game to force a 45 degree angle. This sets up the angle for Broadway heading west from 9th Street. Switch back to the two lane road tool and find where the guideline for the 45 degree angle we just set up and 9th Street intersect. We want both lines to be highlighted here. Now extend the road to meet up at 10th and Park Avenue like so. It should be roughly 12 units long and cost 480 credits. Now bulldoze this curved gravel road and the gravel stub we used to set up the angle over at Main Avenue. Then add in the section of Park Avenue from 6th Street to Main Avenue following the guidelines. Next, we'll switch back to our two lane gravel road tool and extend 6th and 7th Streets up to Park Avenue and 9th Street up to our new section of Broadway. Finally, We'll switch to curved roads and our two lane road tool to connect up this six unit stub next to Main Avenue using the guideline. All right! Let's upgrade this little section of Broadway and these two sections of Main Avenue to pavement and set up our street names and stop signs. Now let's make sure our new area has water. Extend a pipe for one block under 7th Street to the south and north, and then build pipes under 9th and 11th Streets too. 
I'm extending some of these farther than I really need to, since money is rolling in now and I know we'll build streets north of Park Avenue soon anyway. Let's drop in some zones now. We'll put commercial along Park Avenue, Broadway, and Main Avenue near our city center like so, and residential everywhere else. Don't forget the three blocks between Water Street and Mill Street. Before we start the clock, let's open up our budget panel and check out our info views. First, electricity is at 75% with cool weather. With all the new sims coming in, let's just push this up to 100% to keep everyone warm. We're getting close to capacity on water, so let's increase that budget to 80%. On garbage, we're starting to fall behind. Let's boost that up to 100%. As I mentioned earlier, healthcare, like fire and police, contributes to land value. Let's make sure that all three are set at 100%. Finally, education. There's more to life than being really, really, really ridiculously good looking. So let's play it safe and boost this budget to 100% so our sims will all learn to read good. We'll keep an eye out for problems and start the clock to reach our next milestone of 1200 sims. Our garbage processing is falling behind, so let's boost the budget to 150% to get ahead. Notice that this 50% increase in budget leads to only a 25% increase in capacity. Increasing most city service budgets beyond 100% only gives a small gain in capacity. The only way to really be cost effective is to build more garbage facilities. But we don't have money for that right now, so this temporary fix will do. All right, we made it. We've unlocked landscaping, parks, high schools, public libraries, and industrial areas. We absolutely want to build all of those, but we have some economic obstacles to overcome, and I don't just mean our bank balance of 30,000 credits. We'll come back to that in a second, though. What are our two key takeaways from this episode? First, there's no need to become an accountant to balance our budget in city skylines. Most everything comes with two costs, a one-time build cost that comes out of our bank balance in white down below, and a recurring upkeep cost which comes out of our weekly income in green right here. Second, we also learned how to use info views to see the coverage area for service buildings and how well each service is functioning. When the blue arrow is pegged to the right, we know we might be able to save money by reducing that service's budget. And when we see the blue arrow slide into the yellow or red, we know it's time to increase capacity, either by boosting the budget or building more of that service. If we take a look at garbage, we can tell it's time to build another recycling center since a 150% budget can't even keep up. We also need to expand the water budget from 80% to keep our sims happy as we expand, and it looks like we might need another power plant soon too. We only touched on this, but usually expanding our city or adding services coverage brings in more revenue than it costs us. We'll talk more about this in our next episode with a special focus on parks and education. For example, why would low numbers of educated sims make it a bad idea to build parks right away? And how could an increase in land value possibly hurt our city's growth right now? To get the answers in part four, subscribe so you don't miss out. And if you learned something in this video, hit that like button and share this with friends. Thanks for watching. So long.